Okay, so that was kind of a look at the old school way of making steel, right? Now we're going to look at the current steel making process. Okay. So you saw in that last video that we just watched, the guys down in Virginia making, you know, steel from dirt, basically. And it's their little hobby, which is all right by everybody in here, right? It's just a hobby. I like to make a knife from dirt. Hang on the wall. I don't know. I'll never do that. It's never going to happen. But anyways. So there's obviously better ways of making steel now, right? So the different kinds of ovens. Bessemer. What we'll do is I'll go over these ovens and then we'll look up a picture of them on, on the Google so you can see what it actually looks like. Bessemer uses oxygen to burn out carbon and other impurities. And that, the guy in the video was compared to a cleaning process, right, which is pretty accurate. You're cleaning it up, right? You're getting rid of the bad stuff. You're welding it back together. When they're saying welding it back together, it just drips, and it's so hot that it fuses, right? So obviously there's a lot further reduction that has to be done. But the Bessemer. is limited to pig iron. Remember we looked up pig iron in the last class. Small amounts Measured carbon are added to the molten metal after the blow to produce carbon steel. Talking about blow, that means they're going to send oxygen down, right? Or in, depending on someone goes inside, depends on the furnace. This process is now obsolete. Uh oh, why did I have to write all that down? It's important due to its historical significance. That's politically correct. If anybody ever finds one of these ovens for free, let me know. I want to cut a hole in the side and put it in the woods for a deer stand. Process. It's got its own process on Wikipedia. You don't think it'd be fun to stick your head up top of that? <laughs> well, you meant the size of a German bunker. They probably cut a couple holes in it. That way I can crawl around in it, depending on where you know, something is. Or put some kind of burying system on the top, right? Yeah, that's old school. See it? 
you can see it's got all these gears where it turns and pour it out. And that's when all, you know, bad things can happen, right? Is when they're pouring, something slips, pours too fast, and then, you know, we're going to watch that video of the ten most uh, the best steel explosions. <coughs> that's when it all goes down, usually with the pour. That's obsolete, though, so we're moving on. Basic oxygen furnace. There's the modern development of the Bessemer. So we threw the Bessemer oven out, we brought in the basic oxygen furnace. The furnace that roughs it up, right, turns it into sponge iron. So some of these ovens are in steps, right? You step one, basic oxygen, then it goes to another oven for further refinement, depending on what you're doing. Uses a lance to blow oxygen down from the top of the furnace and burn out impurities. And again, you're just doing a reduction process here. You're cleaning it up. Whoops. Use the lance to blow oxygen down from the top of the furnace to burn out the impurities. An advantage of this is it uses a lot of scrap steel to produce the final product. So an advantage of this is it uses a lot of scrap steel to produce the final product. Scrap's a big advantage, right, because you're not taking it from a rock. It really reduces the process down. And you can say you're recycling, which is big nowadays, right? Sustainability, right? Total world production of raw steel is 862,600,000 tons. That's a lot of freaking steel, right? That's tons, so it, you know. Eight hundred and sixty-two million two thousand pounds piles of steel. That's a lot of freaking steel, right? Then we know where good steel comes from, by the way. You guys were, well, where did that get? Oh, 
left with Rome. I was going to say, what's stamped on the side of like Angline? Anybody know? Breezy? What? What's stamped on the side of Angline? You have no idea. Canada, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, Canada has good steel that comes out. China is usually not that great. If you're looking at like uh, something like galvanized, and it comes from like third world countries, no OSHA regulations, right? You'll say like uh, it comes from Turkey, Vietnam. It's right on the side of it. The U.S. production, is 11.4% of that amount. That's not bad, right? It's actually probably pretty low for what we actually use. I have no idea what the United States uses in manufacturing for steel, but it's a lot, right? All those cars, buildings, basic oxygen first. Produced fifty three million three hundred thousand tons of the total ninety seven million nine hundred thousand tons produced in the USA. Producing roughly half. By the way, maybe one of the lances. There's actually a uh, process where they take big chunks of steel off of an oxygen lance. Let's do oxygen lance. The oxygen lance cutting, or usually at steel mills. See that? What does that thing look like? Can you, you can see it. It's just a tube, right? That's all it is, a tube that blows oxygen out. With oxygen lance cutting, they usually do it in steel, steel mills where they take off big, huge chunks of steel. There's your the lance coming down here into the oven. So let's go basic oxygen. Look at that. Pops right up. It's all cartoons. Which cartoon do we want? Basically what it looks like right there. Slag coming out this side. Steel coming out this side. Oxygen coming down from the top. There it is. Refractory lining. Molten iron, 70 to 75% steel scrap, 25 to 30% plus lime. I don't know what dolomite is. I'm guessing it's another term for lime, but there's the whole process, right? So that's your basic oxygen. O2. 
open hearth process. It's still used in the United States. steel come from? With where's good steel come from? You know? No. What's stamping the side of angle iron? Canada? You ever see that stamp on the side of angle iron? No. Oh. It's something Canada's doing right. I'm just kidding, Canada. Four million four hundred thousand tons of steel were produced by the open earth process. So it's not a huge portion of the, the industry, right? When you have eight hundred and sixty two million that's been producing four. It produces 100 to 375 tons of steel per heat. So 100 to 375 tons of steel per heat and it produces, well each heat takes around four hours. Imagine that. What is a work day? How many hours do you work in a day? About eight, about eight right? So you get about two per eight. Or not two per eight, two per day. Let's get that overtime. United States numbers. They work eight hours in Europe? I don't even know. I don't think so. <laughs> they think they work like 30 hour weeks. I was talking to my dad because really? Europeans don't ask out. So. We'll have to put that on a YouTube video. How many hours do Europeans work in a week? We'll find out. Let's see here, I got a giant definition for this next thing that I'm going to cut down here. Oh wait, we got to look up the open hearth again. Okay. See, it's the form of a ladle. I guess you can't really tell that unless it's cut away. But you can see heated fuel gas going in, steel melt, oxygen lance is going down, boredom, off gas. There it is. It's not for a little. Look at a ladle. 
not quite like a Grady bolt, but yeah, it's, it's a label. Rimmed steel. A low carbon steel insufficiently oxidized. During solidification, there was a giant definition for this, just so you know, you can thank me later, I, that's a, that's layman's terms, right? It's a low carbon steel, insufficiently deoxidized during solidification. Beautiful. I'll read the rest. This is what I saved you. A low carbon steel insufficiently deoxidized that during solidification releases considerable quantities of gas, mainly carbon monoxide. When the mold is not capped, a side and bottom rim of several inches forms the solidified ingot has scattered blowholes and porosity in the center, but a relatively thick skin free from blowholes. Woo. Can you imagine writing all that? Because we're going to. No, I'm just kidding. We'll look that up here in a second. There's two of them that we're going to look up. First rim, the next one is killed. Killed steel. Steel that has been deoxidized. You want your steel to have oxygen in it? Negative. They say a low carbon steel. What do you want to machine and weld? Low carbon steel, right? 90% of the time it's a grade called A36, right? Well, the machines is different because they, they machine cold roll, right? Does everyone know the difference between cold roll and hot roll? How do you roll it? Well, it's true, that's exactly right. But <laughs> how do you identify it, I guess I should say? Hot rolled has rounded edges, right? So like if you have square stock, it's gonna be rounded. Cold rolled has a sharp edge. Because if you take hot rolled and try to machine it, in order to get it to a usable shape, you're gonna have to machine it to where it's square. So they might that's why they buy cold roll, one of the reasons anyways. The other thing that identifies cold roll is they'll have oil all over it. You ever gone with that, that steel rack, you grab a piece of steel and it's all covered in oil? That's cold rolled. Because so they don't want it to rust, because the machinists would have to then machine off any kind of pits, right? So they want to make sure it lasts. But low carbon steel is mainly what you're gonna weld and machine as far as steel goes. Now, I'm not saying that's all, obviously, but most of the time that's what's going on. If you get high carbon steel, it can brittle, it can turn brittle, right? Through any kind of heating, whether it's, obviously welding's bad, but if it's a machine, it would be dull tools, things like that. Um, when that carbide's going through it, it's creating heat, right? Heat's like the main enemy of, of machining, right? That's why they have heat treatments. If you have to machine a high carbon steel and they want it hard in the end, they'll machine it and then they'll do a heat treatment, right? They'll punch it and make it hard, depending on what the application is. And obviously there's a million applications for everything, right? So this isn't every time exact on the money, right? It all depends on the application. But anyways, that's low carbon steel. So if you were to ask, you know, what are you uh, welding a machine out there? The correct answer really would be low carbon steel if you wanted to get real technical. There's grades too, you could also say the grade, but. Rim. 
trimmed steel. Wow, look how many different categories there are. Beautiful picture. See all these holes? That's a rimmed steel. The outside doesn't have the holes. Now, this is going to go on to further refinement, right? That's this. So they're going to make this rim steel ingot, sent it somewhere. It's going to get further broken now. Killed steel has been or, uh, sufficiently deoxidized. I always remember that because it killed the oxygen. Killed it. Deoxidized it, right? That's how I remember it anyways. Now, we've been saying the word ingot a lot lately, right? <coughs> We know what an ingot is. You've probably seen one on semis driving by on the highway, right? A large, I used to have one out there, and then somebody stole it. It was only about a foot and a half long, but. It goes with lots of metals too, it's not just steel. Gold ingots, right? A large block of metal that is usually cast in a metal bowl and forms basic material for further rolling and processing. So a steel ingot is fairly useless as far as going into something for production, right? It's got to get further broken down. Good for shipping, you know, like you can throw them out of the Ford truck, head down the road into another plant. Again, it all depends on what you're doing. Here we go. The last furnace Is electric. This is where everything is going now, right? Because we can produce electricity uh, cleaner now, they say, I guess. You ever notice the environmentalists all complain about everything you do to get electricity? Photovoltaic cells. They're ugly, right? But who cares in, you know, Arizona, in the desert? Robot. Well, it only works during the day. Okay. We'll just burn coal. Windmills. Huge windmill process. Get put in where at? Arkwright. Arkwright, yep. Yeah. Cherry Creek, South Dayton. Kind of the Ferroni area, right? What's the problem with windmills? The birds, right? It's going to mess up the birds. Ah, we'll just burn coal. Coal is a clean burning fuel, right? I'm not putting down the coal industry, I'm just, you know, playing devil's advocate, I guess you could say, on the environmentalist. So, what's our other option we got? Hydroelectric. Hydroelectric is pretty good, but there's not a lot of rivers where you can Geothermal. harness that, right? What else we got for clean? Solar panels. Solar panels are the photovoltaic cells, but they're ugly. Geothermal. Geothermal? I don't know. We're just burning coal. <laughs> Natural gas is supposed to go into Dunkirk, right? The whole project got shut down. Because you can't put a pipeline in, right? You can't frack. Frack would be the other one, right? You hydrofrack and then you pull out natural gas, which burns. You think, does, that, does natural gas burn cleaner than, you know, coal? Yeah. But we live in New York, right? So we can't hydrofrack. We'll just burn coal. Yeah. Anyways. I think this uh, camera died.
Did it really? Electric furnace. Using the same process as the open earth. But it is heated through, guess what? Electricity. Is that induction heating or how do they manage that? They got these electrodes that go down into it, heat up. Yeah. We'll look at it here in a second. It'll probably be a cartoon again. A. Comprise 35% of the steel production in the United States. Comprises 35% of the total production of steel. In the USA, they produce up to one hundred tons of steel per heat. Let's go ahead and go electric. You think you would know that I'm looking at furnace at this point, just off back and do it with it. Oh. <laughs> We're gonna have to add something. There we go. Steel mill. See, see how it's pouring right here? That's where bad things happen, right? I thought they'd have a diagram, but nope, there they go. Power cables. Imagine how big those are. <laughs> the size of your arm. Electrodes. So they have these electrodes going down to heat it up. Oxygen inlet. A door for removing the slag. That little iron goes out over here, so it kind of looks like a ladle as well. How long does this one take to do that? I don't know. It's not in the notes. <laughs> it's not in the notes. It doesn't happen, all right? No, I have no idea how long it takes. Anybody ever work in a foundry, by, by the way? There's one in Dunkirk, so usually about every three years I get somebody that worked there before. Guess what we're going to have next class? So we better increase our funds. Let's go to 48. Quiz. Next class. Oh, yeah. Are you excited? Loving life? <laughs>